Hi guys, perfume lovers out there. Welcome to my channel, The Honest Perfume Reviewer. This video is not going to be um, a regular uh, review. I mean, I always review and talk about fragrances in this channel, like every single video, even if it's titled something else. I'll talk about what I'm wearing today, maybe what I wore yesterday, maybe a comparison I've done recently or something. But today I have the need to, to share a few things with you, some good and some bad. Um, I'll just start with the good. The other day when I came home, I, I want to talk about some new arrivals to the house. Um, the other day when I came home, uh, in the mailbox, uh, this beautiful little chocolate box with a ribbon around it was waiting for me. It was all wrapped up in, in bubble wrap uh, from someone in Washington who follows this channel. Uh, had We have also been in contact on email and she said she wanted to send me a few things. Um, I mean, this is someone who I've never met. She just wants to share her collection. I think she's been uh, collecting and enjoying fragrances like for decades. I mean, I think I think she said she was in her 60s. Um, so she has a lot of gems in her collection that I could never find like on the market or in, in uh, I mean, I could probably hunt them down if I knew what I was looking for, but I don't think I would dare, you know, spend a lot of money on vintage fragrances without being able to try them. I mean, I know that there's, we can get them like eBay, in Europe, uh, it's a lot of postage and stuff, and so so that also adds a lot to the to the money that they're asking for these fragrances. So I was so happy when I came. It was it was wrapped up much nicer than this, but there are like twenty plus fragrances in here that she's made. She also added some modern things. I've taken those out just to kind of like put them in the right categories because the, I'm trying these the, the the vintage ones. Most of these are vintage. Uh, fragrances from her own collection and she's made these little decants with the electric tape and everything so in here I have like four different versions of Shalimar uh, the Shalimar like original PDT uh, there used to be something called perf perfume de toilette um, now they no longer use that now it's I think that the, the lowest the concentration that is the lowest one that I see on the market is eau de cologne like EDC and then comes EDT, EDP, X-ray, perfume etc yeah, four different Shalimars, some of them a little bit more current. I think two of them are like Souffle Intense and um, uh, Mesim Tonka, I think, is a little bit older. Uh, I'm not sure. I haven't, these I have not tried yet, actually. I tried, yeah, I did try the Tonka one. Uh, I really like that one's a little bit sweeter. Uh, the Shalimar PDT uh, Vintage was incredible. So thank you so much, Julia, for sending me this stuff. I was just, I mean, seriously, I, tears were were rolling down my cheeks when I opened this package. I just felt like a kid on Christmas morning. Um, just the, the, the effort you put into this, the thought you put into this and spending all this time and um, sharing your you know precious drops of these oldies that, that can't be replaced. I'm just, it, it's, it's an incredible feeling. The Shalimar, um, I'm, I, I'm not really like, I tried like current Shalimar EDP quite recently and didn't like it. I thought like that the leather there went really sour on me. Um, but this was maybe a year ago, so maybe I should go back and just, but this was incredible. And I've tried some other fragrances and she also sent me like a little uh, sample of like my own personal old favorite private collection from East Estee Lauder. Um, that, ah, oh, Parfum. It's a perfect, that, no wonder it's so concentrated. I think that maybe, you know, older fragrances, sometimes when they sit around, even if they're properly stored, they do kind of evaporate a little bit or they something happens to, to the fragrance. There's some kind of, you know, degradation going on. And it's this, when you put it on skin, it was like really, really oily and very concentrated. Super, super green experience. Um, I mean, the first three hours, I really loved it. Then it kind of went a little bit sour on me. Um, so this, if I would blind buy this, like on eBay or something, I would really want to, you know, I don't really want to try the fragrance. Um, and I've also seen, they, they've come with like a, a more current release called Eau de Private Collection. So it's not the same, but the packaging looks almost exactly the same. It just says Eau de on the new ones. And the bottle looks exactly the same. Maybe the juice is a little bit lighter, but that fragrance is not the same as the original. And I think this is a really original formula and a different concentration than the one that I had. Um, but it, it is really, it brings back so many memories for me. I'm just so happy that I got to try this. I've already worn it twice, but since it's so concentrated, it, it'll last me a few more wearings, even though I just have that little tiny drop. Um, 
Okay, and these are the vintage Shalimar. That was just an experience as well. Um, I'm going to tell you more about these in detail. I just kind of most, mostly right now I wanted to share that I got this and like that people will do this for, for strangers, you know, like I hear, I mean, I hear that other YouTubers get sent things, um, from followers, you know, like a Ramsey gets sent things from his, his, you know, fans, whatever. Um, but I get this my first time. This is the first time it's happened to me. Uh, I have Jiki in here. I have Mitsuko in here from Guerlain. Uh, Jiki's also a Guerlain fragrance. Uh, I have uh, Shiseido Zen um, in the black bottle. Uh, I think I talked about that on my channel because I tried that at a friend from a friend's bottle recently. It's just incredibly beautiful. I was having this gal galbanum kind of um, little frenzy and I kind of was checking out everything with galbanum and I think galbanum and this has just kind of confirmed that belief that galbanum was done better back in the day. And I think maybe it's not the galbanum note per se, but it is the Shepra style fragrances um, with those fruits they used then and also like the oak moss, the way it was done, it used to be done. And I think one of the number one differences is the way the animalic notes are done. Like maybe it's the real stuff because I find that the Shalimar vintage PDT uh, is so beautiful and it has just the right like anim animalic undertones that never go like the Francesca Bianchi um, in that direction where it goes too far, you know, it goes too skanky. This is just like, you get that, it's just a drop, you know, it's just perfectly, perfectly put together. And, oh God, I just love, I just love that Shalimar. Um, I mean, I am going to be generous with my friends and I'm, I'm planning a big perfume meetup on the 17th of June. Um, like 23 people have signed up already. So these meetups are getting more increasingly popular. It'll be fun. Um, I will be moving to a smaller home. Now I'm in a new room. I don't know if you know, this This house has so many rooms. I never even use this room. Uh, it's a shame. Uh, but as long as I have this big house, I can have these and host these big perfume meetups. And I will let people, you know, I'm not going to let them spray themselves all over, but I will let them, you know, they'll have to dab it a little bit and be careful so we can all, you know, all have a sniff. I have silences here from Yakimo from the 90s, Iris Empire EDP. This is a, a quite current one, Keller, Carolina Herrera from 2020. I haven't tried that yet. Uh, there's vintage Halston uh, from 1975. Uh, Rochas Femme, um, that I wore this morning, beautiful. But the first, it did come off like a grandmother scent for the first like 15, 20 minutes. Uh, it's from the 50s. I uh, also, and also on the other arm, I tried Miss Dior from the 60s. Um, really, really different from the Dior today. I mean, I used to have a bottle of Miss Dior Parfum concentration. It's discontinued now. It comes in a 40 ml bottle with a little um, silver ribbon around the top. But that was like a really heavy Tonka fragrance, kind of sweet, vanillic rose fragrance. Um, this is completely different. It also has those animalic undertones that are really, really beautiful. Um, okay, let's see. What else have I got here that I want to... I have something vintage from Lowe. You know, Lowe, uh, L-O-E-W-E. -E. I don't know how to pronounce that name. It's called Air. I haven't tried that yet. What else do I have in here? Vol de Nuit from Guerlain. I have tried. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, I can't believe I have, um, like, a good, good squirt of that. Oh, my God. I wore this the other day. This is an, a, a stunner. This I'm going to try to find on eBay because they're not that expensive. Ivoire de Balmain from, um, from Balmain. <laughs> um, it is, see, I, but I'm not sure. I have, to, I have to ask Julia. Julia, if you're listening, um, if we could maybe uh, become friends on Facebook. We could maybe chat on Messenger and you could send me a photo of this bottle so I know what I, I want when I'm looking on eBay. In Sweden, I mean, I'm not going to find this in Sweden. It would be really unlikely. I mean, I did see an old bottle of, like, what's it called? Ladis from Balenciaga that Ramsey recently talked about on his channel. Like, they, I mean, vintage bottles do come up. They do. Um, there's a really old bottle of Guerlain something. God, I can't remember the name now. It's not It's not one of these mo mo more famous ones. Um, but it's a splash bottle with a pointy top. It's called... Uh, I'm kind of following these uh, auctions now, but this Ivoire de Balmain, it is 
incredibly beautiful green galbanum scent. Um, oh my God, I've worn it twice. Um, it's incredibly beautiful. Really, really want a bottle. Um, I'm hoping to not have to pay too much. Um, but it, it's called, it says Vintage Atomiser EDT. So maybe if I get, get like a different formula, it'll still be beautiful. I'm not sure, but um, highly, highly recommend if you can get your nose on that. And then here's something Ombre Noir from Bricourt. I don't even know what that is. Uh, Jubilation 25 from Amouage uh, Original Formula. I think my friend might have this, but I haven't tried it in a long, long time. Um, that was the Miss Dior from the 60s. It's the Eau de Cologne. And then I have here uh, Julie Madame from ba Balmain as well. Balmain. Balmain, maybe. I, I guess you would say that in English. Anyway, I'm so excited about this. And thank you so much for sending this. I'm just, it's its just it's such a blessing uh, to be able to, and then I can, you know, I can go into Ramsey's channel and see what he has to say about these formulations. He wears a lot of women's fragrances if they're, you know, these older formulas. The Chypre style is his favorite, and a lot of them are in that, are in that box. Um, ugh. I'm just so, so grateful, and I just wanted to share with someone who understands the in, the incredibleness of such a gift. Um, and then I've also had uh, this thing show up at my house, Madame Irma. It's a French house that's not even on Fragrantica. I, I swapped my mint discovery set. I had, you know, seven fragrances from mint, um, and I got now these. Uh, there are eight of them. Um, they're kind of a cheaper brand and not, not like super, super cheap, but like they have a 30 mil bottle, I think for like 40 euro or something. I mean, definitely cheaper than like your normal niche. Um, and they're kind of like oud fragrances in here. There's an orange blossom neroli fragrance. There's a, there's a few different patchouli fragrances. Um, I'll probably review these at some point. Right now I'm just so busy with the, with the vintages and other things that have, you know, ended up here in right now. Um, I got two fragrances from, these I actually bought from someone in my groups. I've got two from Maison Violet, um, Sketch and Compliment. Uh, I will be reviewing these pretty soon. I was going to swap my, I was going to get a Magnificent Gold YSL fragrance from someone. And I offered her my Santal Complet from Fragrance Du Bois because I just never reach for that fragrance. Um... I think she had a half a bottle and I had two thirds, but that was about the same price, the same value. Um, so we decided to, because she wasn't sure that it would last on her skin. The longevity of Santal Complet is not great on me either. And I'm, you know, honest, of course, to her. And I offered to send her a sample. So she sent me a sample of Mag Magnificent Gold, which I had tried, you know, in store and really, really liked it. Um, so I put it on. I just had a shower. I was out in the garden. I was like dirty. I had dirt all over myself. I'm kind of working with this high pressure washer to get the, the weeds out between the, um, the driveway. Uh, this is an incredibly efficient uh, machine. I feel like a real man. I came in, I was dirty all over. Um, but after my shower, I put on this magnificent gold and, and then it kind of, it was kind of like saffrony. So I decided to compare it to desired uh, from Elisir that I've talked about uh, recently and I had a chance of getting a bottle for a fair price. The owner of this this boutique said he had like a bottle that he had lent out to newspaper and he was going to sell it to me uh, for a reduced price. I ended up passing on that one because I can't, just can't own everything. And I've compared them side by side and they're, they're not similar at all. They have a saffron note, but Magnificent Gold's too sweet for me. I've just realized it's too, it's like Tonka, Vanilla, saffron pink pepper what it's really sweet the vanilla is really sweet i think it's pretty amped up and in elisir is a little bit more i thought that was really sweet until i tried it next to a magnificent gold that's like way sweeter um this one is really heavy on the saffron it also has like clove and cumin and it's more spicy i find it to be more middle eastern where magnificent gold is maybe like they both have oud as well like, I think Magnificent Gold lists white oud. Um, I mean, they're both like Middle Eastern style fragrances, but I think that Magnificent Gold is more like westernized kind of than this Elisir um, desired. Um, but they're both, they're both wearable. I just find it this, I don't like overly sweet fragrances. If they're too sweet, they need something else to kind of like wrap that sweetness up in like more woods or more... 
something, something bright. I don't know. This one, it didn't really have much up here. It, it, it's kind of all sweet and syrupy. Now, I, I, I'm not, I, I don't, I, I said I didn't want to swap, um, which I hope is okay with her. Then I have um, one more positive thing before I get to the negatives. Um, guidance. I, I, I pulled the, or I, um, yeah, <laughs> I bought this. I found it and I want to share something with you about the pricing. I don't know what it's like in the States, but in Europe, in Sweden anyway, and I'm sure it's the same in other countries. Okay, so so someone in our group said, you know, is this beauty store.se, are they legit? And I was like, oh, I think it is, and I recognized it, and I thought, I'm just gonna go in and see. There must be a good price on something since someone is wondering, right? So I look, because I've, I've, I've had my eye on this for quite a while, and I've been checking prices, and I haven't found anything under like 350 to 400 euro. Um, and then it was down to like 260. And I'm like, okay, I, I, I thought about it for like 10 minutes. I'm like, I'm getting it. You know, I haven't seen it for that price. Um, and what what I saw the next day, I went in to check because last time they were, they were having incredible sale on absolute aphrodisiac when that was down 44%. The next day, the sale was gone. So they put things on sale for a super short time. Uh, um, and then also what I noticed was this was not only marked up to like 350, 360, 370, something like that. Um, it was also out of stock. So I'm thinking like that they decide to, maybe they get a hold of a few fragrances of a popular fragrance. They know a lot of people are looking for this now. And they try to create some kind of buzz, maybe through their influencers. And then a lot of people start visiting the site, but they miss, uh, they miss the mark by, by a few minutes or a few hours and it's out of stock. So um, they end up, you know, staying there remembering the site, maybe they buy some masca mascara or, you know, shampoo or other fragrances at ordinary price, you know, the normal price. I don't know, but this is, um, uh, and the poor girl who, who put this in the group and was asking about it, when she went in, it was out of stock. So I ended up getting a bottle that she, she you know, she wanted it. She had seen it before me. Uh, you know, this person, I don't even know her. She's, she's in the group, but I don't, I don't know her personally. I've never met her. I didn't know she was after this one either. Uh, anyway, I'm very happy to have it. I just picked it up uh, yesterday, wore it yesterday while gardening. It's a, it's a super, super potent fragrance. Um, it, I, I do find it really unique, though. I mean, it does have some similarities with Journey Woman, the Osmanthus in here. Um, I'm not a fruity kind of girl, but I think it really works in this one because of the ambergris, maybe, because of the woods, because of... Um, that I don't I mean I usually don't like nut and and fruit and it has hazelnut but I think it's the incense that makes it work it it feels amouagey although it also feels kind of like a powdery french perfume and it has a little bit of a young I heard another reviewer say she didn't find this like it was more for a mature woman I don't but I don't agree I think it's really young uh and I tried it on my daughter who's 19 and she said she liked it so um I've heard two YouTubers say that this totally fills the house like just putting it on themselves and like walking around it like it spreads throughout the house um i put three sprays on yesterday um and that was like i put it on the afternoon it was good the whole night until i went to bed i mean it, it's it, it's a it's a long lasting fragrance it's a people pleaser i mean this will be an easy reach for me like when i go dancing or to parties or to like when i don't want to be offensive but i don't know i want to smell good and maybe a little bit different it has a little bit of a designery feeling somewhere in there, but it also has the Amawaji base, which makes it interesting yet people pleasing. Very happy to have that in my collection. Oh dear, this video is getting a little bit long. Okay, now for the discussion that I kind of feel like having that has nothing to do with reviewing a fragrance. Well, it does have because, okay, everyone, probably all of you listening have, have heard that um, Dior Privé is launching in, you know, this week or last week or two weeks ago or in June sometime. Maybe it's not in your store yet. I don't even know if it has come to my local department store. I do know that a person in my community ha has a bottle of it, but he, he tends to get like, he tends to go way out to get things before everyone else. I think he gets a kick out of doing that. I don't really know why, but he has it before everyone else. Um, and he also buys like everything that comes from Dior. Um, it's called Dior Riviera. And this is the first fragrance that um, has come out since uh, Francis Kirk John took over after, what's his name, Mashi, Francois Mashi, I think his, his name is, the, the older 
um, the one who, who was in charge at, at Dior before that, or like master perfumer there, or house perfumer, whatever. And not one single reviewer I have heard say that they're disappointed in what he has put out here. I mean, I know it's summer, and of course he's going to make a summer fragrance for summer. That makes sense. But it's like, I can kind of just hear them like, they're, this is also interesting. Oh, the perfume guy has a bottle, 250 mil. Uh, Persolez has a bottle that's um, 40 mil. And then this other reviewer that has maybe, you know, 4,000 followers has a, a 7.5 mil um, splash bottle. So uh, they're not buying these fragrances themselves. I mean, they're just not. Um, and I think they've even gotten them like before they've even come out in store. Um, I just listened to this one person said she purchased, she chose the 125 bottle. She selected it when she purchased it. I think that was to total bullshit. Um, oh, speaking of bullshit, sorry for using it. I mean, I, I think it's so refreshing when reviewers like Ramsey can say he started his channel because of the BS out there in the fragrance community. And I just can so appreciate someone who can just swear about it and be irritated about it and like, um, just have the need to express this. Um, and one of you guys have, have recommended Persolet's uh, fragrance channel, and I do feel that he's very knowledgeable about fragrance. Um, I'm going to give him another chance. I have listened to some more. I think what I, the reason I haven't listened so much to him is because he does a lot of lives. They take kind of a long time, and he's like politely saying hello to everyone, writing in during the live, which does not really give me anything. I understand that it is important to get that recognition you know, the feeling of the dialogue going back and forth for the people writing in. But I'm listening to this, you know, five months later. It, I don't know who all these people are. I want to get to the good stuff, you know. I want to get the meat. So um, he did a review He did a review of, um, of um, Dior Riviera, and he, he's just too polite for my taste. I, I think I could sense some disappointment there, like that this was not what, I mean, this was not what the fragrance community was waiting for. I mean, Francis Kirkjohn took over. Of course, we're expecting something bold or something big or something more different than like a rose fig freshie um, that's like with, inspired by the Mediterranean. I mean, there are 10,000, there's tens of thousands of fragrances out there that sound about like that. I'm just so not excited about this uh, trying Dior Riviera. I, I, I will try it. I mean, this guy is coming to our perfume meetup. He'll bring it. It's like a rose fig green note kind of fragrance that seems to be kind of like fresh. I think there's some citruses in there. In there. They only list three notes. Um, and then this other person, oh yeah, the, the, I, I just saw that like the size of the bottle that, that the reviewers were showing was in direct correlation to how many followers they had on, on YouTube. So I think what they're doing is they're sending everything out at the same time. Uh, they might not have strings attached, but the reviewer makes money if someone clicks on that link and orders uh, through them. So it is not clean. It is not clean. Um, and I just wish that they would just, you know, and I just saw one, this one person, God, what is her name? I just started following her today because she had made a review. I don't even call it a review. It was all just marketing. You know, if you buy this from the Dior website, you spend this much on the Dior website, you get this little pouch, you get this little this, and it's so beautiful. And there were little sparkles going on on the screen. It was just like a commercial. I thought, who wants to who wants to watch this? Maybe if you're a Dior fan, you like everything that comes out from there. But I'm just I'm just so not impressed with Dior Privé in general. I find their fragrances to be way. I mean, they their prices have just gone through the roof. They were overpriced already a year ago, and now they've like gone up um, a big step up. And a lot of their releases are so darn watery. Like I tried, I, I bought a discovery set with like eight fragrances and you got like splash bottles, like 7.5 mil of these eight fragrances. And I just, I mean, Rose Gypsy, Tea Cashmere. Um, there was another rose fragrance in there that was like so boring. These fragrances are just boring. Um, Gris Dior, which is an okay Chypra. Um, what else was in there? I don't know, Amber Nui, too masculine. Amber Nui is nice, but very, very masculine and not unique at all. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anyone. The only one I have in my collection now, all the minis are gone, um, is this, New Look 1947. I don't know if you can even, God, this is really hard to do here. You don't have to take my word for that this is it. 
Um, this is the 100. I would never have bought this 125 mil bottle had they not been out of the 40 mil. And they said it was discontinued. They said it was discontinued. Um, I don't believe Dior. I think this is something they do. I mean, it, it, it might be. It, it, you can find it. Ask for it. They'll open a drawer and bring it out and sell it to you. But they don't. Maybe it doesn't fit into the lineup. One thing good I'll say about Dior is the incredible sprayers. I can see if you can get any just like perfect spray. You get a little cloud and it just all. Actually, my my like my best perfume friend, um, she says that it's really important. I don't know if I, I'm with her on this, but it's really important how you spray the fragrance. And like if you spray from a little bit further away and it kind of like hits your arm over a bigger space rather than doing this, she says it makes a huge difference to the experience, the wearing experience. Uh, I can't say that I, I have noticed that, but I trust her a lot because she's been in the fragrance uh, thing for like so many years, like since she was 12 years old, she's been collecting fragrance and she has a, a big, incredible collection with lots of like old quality vintage bottles. Um, this uh, new look is a really, really nice fragrance. Um, it's kind of like a I mean, I get iris from this. I don't think it's listed, but it has like ylang ylang, musk, and some different... It's a floral fragrance with musk. It's, it's really, really nice. It really works on a man as well. But the longevity, the performance, it really sucks. The sillage is like super, super short. I can hardly smell myself when I wear this. Therefore, it's a kind of a disappointment. I would even be willing to let this go because... And I don't even care. Like, is it discontinued? Isn't it? I, I'm not the type that needs to go out and... I heard Ramsey had gone out and bought a bottle of Feve Delicieuse because he heard that it was being discontinued. Um, and I don't understand why they would discontinue like one of their most popular fragrances. I just don't get it. Um, it could be, it could be. Uh, this is um, a theory of Ramsey's when it comes to other fragrances that some of the ingredients have gone up in price so much that it's not possible to make it and maintain the same scent anymore. Um, so it doesn't make it worthwhile. So that could be one reason, but he, that fragrance is not his style at all. I, I was, I wrote to him and I said, I cannot believe that you own a bottle of Feb Delicious. I don't like that fragrance at all. And I guess neither does he, I think he's ready to let that go. It's like really, really sweet. And to me, it smells like plastic. Um, some fragrances give me a real plasticky vibe, you know, like Soriso from Perfume and Roma does the same thing. Um, I'm a little bit off topic here. No, but I was, what I wanted to say about Dior Privé, um, I was unimpressed with the line before Francis Kirkjohn came, took over and they did that kind of like half new launch last year with three new fragrances that have been a part of the collection before. None of them were anything impressive to me. Uh, they don't, they don't make many, they don't have many unique fragrances in that collection. What they do have though is beautiful, beautiful presentation. I think this is really simple and really beautiful. Um, I know that this looks just white now in the it's really hard to do this. I'm not like a technical person. Um, I mean, I, I should, I shouldn't let this go. It's really, really beautiful. I mean, I like it. It's just that you just have to spray so much of it on. I'll just, I could just go on and on and on about with this fragrance like this, and it's not even going to overwhelm me. Um, <clears throat> it's really nice. It has, a, I don't even think it has vanilla listed, but it has a really nice vanillic undertone. Um, that it doesn't go too sweet. I, I love this fragrance, but uh, the line as a whole and their boring new launches and how underwhelmed I feel about this Dior Riviera, and I haven't even smelled it, but I just can, can kind of feel like the, the perfume guy and all these big channels, like that they're kind of faking it. They're like, he's disappointed too, but he doesn't want to say it because he wants to be in the business. And he's like, I don't know. Just, just, you know, the emperor is naked. Just, can we just, can we just agree he's got no clothes on? Um, that this is, this is a really disappointing launch. And I know I don't have to buy it, but like you, all those YouTubers out there and influencers, you don't have to, um, you know, do what Dior tells you. And I'm just, I'm just so fed up with those kind of reviewers. Um, yeah, I'm just, I don't know. Sorry, I just, it just kind of pissed me off and it has been the last few days and I've just, it was kind of like, just kind of, so much came up at the same time on YouTube and I was just kind of Googling on, I mean, on YouTube on Dio Riviera and just watching through the different ones. And there was not a single one that I felt was trustworthy because if you're like me, 
this, the, the, a channel my size, you have not gotten a hold of Dior Riviera yet. You know, I can't review it because I don't have a bottle. So if you're big enough to have a bottle, then you are a little bit bribed, you know? There's no such thing as a free lunch. Um, sometimes the free lunch is a little bit smaller, you know, and then if you're big, like the perfume guy, you get a 250. And if, if he was spending his own money, I even put this question in the comments, if he was spending his own money, why would he choose a 250 ml bottle, given the fact that he has, he probably has 2,000 fragrances, I'm just guessing, but why would you buy 250 ml of that boring rose fig fragrance? It doesn't make any sense at all. Dior wants to show off their big bottle through his channel, and it's just so obvious to me. And there, I mean, there's got to be some kind of a law on this soon that you have to you have to say, you know, this is a sponsored video because this is sponsoring. What is it? If it's, if it's not sponsoring, then what is it? To me, it's just not. It's so dishonest, and it's so. And you know, why am I even bothering? It just. I don't know. I just. It takes the fun out of it. I just think it's not, it's it's not okay to me. Um, and I don't know what we can do about it. I wish I could do something about it. Um, maybe this is where my next, next business idea lies. You know, I'm gonna start some kind of independent newspaper for um, for fragrances. I don't know. Um, I guess Fragrantica is, I, I don't know what you think. Is Fragrantica better or Parfumo? I know Ramsey always talks about Parfumo and very more seldom about Fragrantica. Um, I never go to Perfumo. I don't know why. It's just, like, maybe it's just, and now I, Demi Rawling and her boyfriend have started this sniff one. Uh, I have the app, but I don't see how it is needed because for granted, I think works quite well. It's not always, the, the notes don't always, you know, they're not always accurate, but it's a good starting point. You can start there and then kind of work your way. You can, you know, find more information and then keep Googling and find articles and stuff like that. I think it, I think it works quite well and you can find most things. I couldn't find these though. These, maybe this is just like a local brand. It's a Gras start, a brand that started in Gras. Um, yeah, I just found out that I will actually be having an adult vacation uh, in the end of July or I can, I can go somewhere. I could go to Gras if I want. I can go to Paris. I can go anywhere because uh, my, my youngest son who is the only one who's underage is going to camp for 10 days. So this opens up some possibilities. I'm definitely thinking some kind of perfume trip. I would love to, um, I don't know about grass because I want to go somewhere where I can actually sniff some, you know, I want to go to like the big houses, flagship stores and be able to sniff things that are only sold in Paris. So maybe, maybe I will go to Paris. Maybe London is good enough. I don't know. Like Javoy Paris, they have, um, they have shops in London, or they have one shop in London, and London would of course be closer, and I could also visit people that I know there. I don't know what I'll do, but it's just it's just exciting. Um, I have a daughter graduating um, from like high school in, uh, let's see, it's five days away, so I'm really busy getting ready for that. Uh, so I might not be filming anymore until after the ninth. But I'll see you in the, the next video. Bye bye.